from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Thursday, June 13th. Okay, so we have the moon in Virgo energy all day, which means that we're trying to organize, we're trying to tidy things up, we're trying to create order where there's been chaos, especially in our inner realm of thoughts and emotion. Virgo energy, the fixer of the zodiac, we need to focus on our problems, be very aware of the issues, of the obstacles, of the challenges before we can attempt to actually fix, heal, and repair them. The Virgo energy, of course, is going to intensify the pressure in the headspace as Mercury does rule over the Virgo energy just as much as the Gemini energy that we're currently in. And we are building to the first quarter moon popping off in this Virgo energy in the wee hours. Friday morning. So there's definitely a lot to process. And of course, the Virgo energy helps us to analyze and process and sort through and discern what needs to stay, what needs to go, what we have to focus on, what we have to fix, heal and repair in order for us to clear the way for us to actually jump into something new. There are 10 different aspects taking place here today. Seven of them are going to involve the moon, the sun, in Gemini energy, going to sextile Chiron, the wounded healer in Aries energy. This is a beautiful interaction. It is shining a bright light on this new version of self. This energy that we've been building and cultivating, this confidence, this optimism, this strength in us operating from our real, raw, true, authentic selves. This is a illumination, if you will, on how far we've come giving us an opportunity to kind of give ourselves some credit where credit is due. This is also shining a bright light on where it is that we need to open up, where we need to try new things, where we have to adopt new patterns, new behaviors, new ways of going about our lives in order to create a different result. The moon is then going to make a pretty tough interaction with the north node in Aries energy. So this particular interaction is definitely going to have us set on pause, contemplating what it is that we want to do from here. Now, again, there's a certain element of confusion that has to kick in. There's a certain element of banging our head against a wall, trying to fix, heal, resolve some of the issues that have us kind of stuck in a state of paralysis. At this particular juncture, we're kind of standing still, taking a look around, taking a good look at the lay of the land, so to speak, and where it is that we're hesitating on making some changes, on making some steps in a new path, in a new direction. The moon is then going to interact with Pluto, the great transformer himself, retrograde in this Aquarius energy. We love Virgo and Pluto interacting because they both do a deep dive in our psyche. The problem that is kind of arising at this point for the collective is we have to kind of change our mindset. We have to change our perspective. Again, we're in Gemini energy. So the ability to see both sides of the coin, the ability to actually sort through the pros and cons of each option and variable and opportunity that we currently have on our plate, that is the name of the game. But many of us are stuck in one perspective, stuck in one understanding, stuck focused on one path, one direction that isn't in alignment with our higher self. We're too reliant on the physical realm, the physical form, the logical, practical information that we're bringing in. What we're missing is our higher self. What we're missing is our intuition. And so again, Pluto being retrograde in this Aquarius energy is taking us on an inward journey of being able to illuminate where the power struggle is alive and well. The old self versus new self, the ego self versus higher self. There's a lot of competing parts, especially here in this Gemini season. And so this particular interaction is likely going to intensify the negative narrative, the worry, the anxiety, the anxiousness, the anticipation, all of those funky type of emotions and thoughts in order for us to become aware of them and override them, basically flipping the script and creating something that empowers us instead of making us fearful, worrisome, anxious for what is to come. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Chiron. So whatever funk we just sat in, whatever negative narrative just got illuminated, wherever it is that fears, doubts, and insecurities kind of reared their ugly head, we're able to actually grow from them, heal from them, improve and empower ourselves 
because of the illumination and awareness that we have of that darker part of self. The moon and Chiron showing us where it is that we have an opportunity to break free from those limiting thoughts, from those limiting emotions, from that one tunnel vision perspective. And because of that, now we are building ourselves up in optimism, in confidence, in strength, in our ability to actually make changes and transformations. And this in turn is kind of creating more options and opportunities to make some progress in a new path, in a new direction. Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in this Gemini energy, going to make a positive interaction with Pluto, the great transformer himself, retrograde in this Aquarius energy. We got some air on air action between the Gemini energy and the Aquarius energy. And of course, Venus and Pluto going to intensify our emotions, our affections, what it is that we're feeling, where it is that we're feeling safe, secure, and stable, where it is that we're not, where it is that we want to make changes and improve our relationship dynamics, and where it is that we want to step away and create more time, energy, and space to kind of observe how other people are acting. This is an aha moment. This is an empowerment energy of kind of showing us the options that we currently have. And again, a lot of those options are A, continue doing what it is that you've been doing and get what it is that you've already got, or B, choose different. Whatever that different may be, the smaller changes, the smaller adjustments that we are thinking about, that we are feeling through, this is what's going to kind of reveal the greater, grander change the greater, grander transformation that is needed in order to launch us in a new path, in a new direction. This particular energy can also intensify new passions, new desires, new wants, new needs, especially where our relationship dynamics are concerned, especially in the back of our mind. We want to build something safer, something stronger, something more long term, especially with the people around us. So this little I'm going to call it power play of our heart and our head kind of challenging each other is going to illuminate what it is that we could be, do differently in our relationship dynamics in order to create a different result. The moon is then going to make a very awkward interaction with Mars. Mars is the god of war ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desire, even our anger. He's fresh in this Taurus energy, which isn't his most comfortable position to be in because it's a very low, slow, steady pace of making change. And the changes that we're making are very incremental at this time. It's really starting with the way that we're feeling about ourselves, seeing ourselves, new worth and value within ourselves. It's also seeing where it is that we could make some changes in our routines, how it is that we're moving throughout our day, seeing where it is that we have room for improvement in interacting with the people that we're sharing time, energy, and space with. Mars in this Taurus energy is kind of stubborn, hell bent, damn well, and determined to see a certain path, certain goal, certain project through. However, we haven't been gifted with the green light go ahead to take as many moves and see as much action as we would prefer to see. The moon interacting with Mars in this way is likely going to irritate us a little bit, frustrate us a tad, really kind of trigger and activate us in a way that shows where it is that we're running out of patience. Whether we even had patience to begin with, that is up for debate. But we are essentially starting to feel those ants in our pants. We're starting to get agitated of not having a plan, not having a strategy to actually move forward. And I think that's a good indicator of us being able to use these not so nice thoughts and feelings as motivation and inspiration to kind of formulate the plan, the strategy that we're currently frustrated that we don't have. The moon is then going to sit across from, directly oppose Saturn. Saturn, of course, the Lord of Karma, ruling over roles, responsibilities, system structures, foundations, willpower, and discipline. Saturn is in Pisces energy, and of course, Virgo energy and Pisces energy sit across from each other in the zodiac wheel. They represent the axis of healing. The Virgo energy wants to focus on the physical body, the physical realm, the mental health. The Pisces energy focuses in on our emotional and spiritual realm. And so when opposition is a tension point, doesn't feel so good, doesn't feel so hot, we're likely going to feel a heaviness, a weight kind of takeover. There may actually be a little bit of a reality check, receiving information and details that don't really promote happiness and joy, don't really promote solutions. Again, we kind of have to be cluster effed in our headspace, banging our head against a wall with some of the issues that just seem kind of 
unsolvable at this particular time. We have to have this heaviness, this weight really crunch our headspace in order for us to again flip the script and rise above some of the energies that are trying to pull us down. Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves, ruler over this Gemini season, also in his rulership in Gemini energy, going to sextile Chiron. This is beautiful, beautiful interactions. First of all, it's helping us to see ourselves from a different set of eyes, a more favorable light, if you will. It's also going to elevate the negative narrative that we were sitting in, going to kind of bring us out of that funk, make us a little bit more positive and optimistic with what it is that we're trying to build towards. It's also kind of opening up our mind, so to speak, making us a little bit more real and raw and vulnerable. We're more open to kind of listening to other people. We're more open to learning from the people from the world around us on what it is that we could do differently in order to improve our physical realm. So this may also open up lines of communication to have hearts to hearts. This may actually open our own selves up to understanding where it is that we've created blockages within ourselves. And again, opening the lineup of communication within ourselves, we're able to actually articulate what's been going on in our headspace, what's been going on in our heart space, and present it in a way that if we want to share this information with other people, that not only are we able to kind of share it in a way that is well received, but we kind of get validation and confirmation back that we are being seen, we're being heard, and we're being valued for what it is that we're sharing. The moon is then going to make a very tough interaction with Chiron, which is definitely going to, I'm going to say, paralyze us for just a sec. Now, there's a lot to sort through, especially when we have this high energy pushing us to see ourselves in a new set of eyes, uh, new value, new worth, new wants, new needs, new desires. The minute that we're real and raw and authentic and vulnerable is the minute that we clam up. Just when we have this heart to heart, just when we're able to articulate our inner realm to those around us, that's when we start kind of backpedaling. Should I have said that? Did I overshare? You know, was it well received? Did I portray myself in a good light? Again, the Virgo energy, there's no energy in the zodiac wheel that is harder on oneself. We are highly critical, super judgmental, especially of ourselves. And just when we had an open and raw and vulnerable moment, suddenly, again, we start kind of dissecting the whole conversation. Should I have said this? Could I have said it in a better way? This is kind of stunting our growth right now because it is focusing in on something that we cannot change. We've already expressed ourselves. Now, we may need to edit that conversation if it didn't go as planned. However, a lot of the time we're just in our headspace creating anxiety where there really doesn't need to be any. The last thing that we have going on here today is the moon in this Virgo energy getting into the boxing ring, squaring off with Mercury. So, of course, Mercury rules over this Virgo energy and Mercury's in his other rulership in Gemini energy. So this is a lot of pressure in the headspace because the moon is our heart space and Mercury being our headspace. A square means that we're not on the same page. We're not getting along. A lot of that is because the moon in Virgo is trying to think our way, like intellectualize our feelings, which, of course, does not work. We're not feeling our feelings. We're thinking about our feelings. Even more than that, we're focused on the smaller, little, tiny, little details of our inner realm. And of course, Mercury just wants us to explore different ways of thinking, different ways of being. That Gemini energy is trying to break us out of what it is that we have been doing and open us up to different options. This is also an aspect where, again, a square doesn't feel good, tension and conflict, in order for us to grow. Now, communication may take a pretty dramatic turn. Just think of having an open conversation, being real and raw and vulnerable, and then stepping back, questioning it, repeating it in your head, feeling embarrassed, feeling like you shouldn't have shared that, whatever the case may be. That was that earlier interaction between the moon and Chiron. And now we're getting in the boxing ring with our headspace, with our ability to communicate with what it is that we did say, what it is that we wish we didn't say, what it is that we wish we could have said. And now we're really starting to kind of unravel. Now, just keep in the back of your mind that at this particular juncture, we're about an hour, an hour and a half away 
from the first quarter moon popping off in that Virgo energy. So very much tension filled, very intense. Um, we are reaching an action point, a decision point, a pivot point. And more often than not, that comes out of struggle. It comes out of tension. It comes out of conflict. So we definitely need to be aware of where it is that we're not on the same page emotionally versus mentally and where it is that some of the options, some of the choices that we're currently contemplating and trying to debate between where they are taking us further away from finding compromise and this middle ground versus where it is that, again, we are trying to actively work towards that happy middle point. 